morning and welcome to New Hanover County Schools The Morning Show. I'm Ely Feldman. And I'm Bradley Meadows. This is the week of October 28th through November 3rd. Thanks for starting your day with us. We have a terrific show planned packed with information and fun. Halloween is this weekend and we have a special spooktacular feature on Halloween safety. And we'll close the show with, a, with an edition of Game Time All About Candy. We also have a flighty episode of Science Nation where we examine butterfly and bat wings to improve the way we design wings. And we bring the month of October to a close with a look ahead in our segment, NC Happenings. We'll share a few November events happening all across our state so you can mark your calendars. It is going to be another excellent show, but first let's check in with our news anchor, Milo Kenny. He has been standing by with this morning's news headlines. Good morning, Ellie and Bradley. Welcome everyone to your school news here on The Morning Show. Topping the headlines this week, the 2019 Marching Band showcases, Showcase dazzles the crowd, Pine Valley students take a walking field trip to the fire station, and NHCS schools recognized by NC Department of Public Instruction. I will have all those stories and more coming up later in the show. Thanks, Milo. It's time for a staple here on The Morning Show, This Week in History. Our Grand Master of Historical Knowledge has all the headlines from past times in This Week in History. Welcome to This Week in History. I'm your historical host, Bryce Barker, covering all the colorful and amazing events that have left their mark on history's timeline. This is the week of October 28th through November 3rd. October 28th, 1962, the Cuban Missiles Missile Crisis comes to a close as the Soviet leader agrees to remove from Russian missiles from Cuba in exchange for a promise from the United States to respect Cuba's territory. October 29, 1929, Black Tuesday hits Wall Street as investors trade over 16 million shares on the New York Stock Exchange in a single day. Billions of dollars were lost and the industrialized world spiraled downwards into the Great Depression. October 30, 1938, Orson Welles causes a nationwide, nationwide panic with his broadcast of War of the Worlds, a realistic radio dramatization of Martian invasion on Earth. As many of, as a million radio listeners believe that a real Martian invasion was underway. October 31st, 1517. On this day, the priest and scholar Martin Luther approaches the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany, and nails a piece of paper to it containing the 95 revolutionary options that would begin the pro Protestant Reformation. November 1st, 1512, the sealing of the Sistine Chapel in Rome, one of the Italian artist Michelangelo's finest work, is exhibited to the public for the first time. The epic sealing frescoes took several years to complete. Finally, your weekend tidbits. November 2nd, 1983, President Ronald Reagan signs a bill designated to a federal holiday honoring Martin Luther King Jr. to be observed on the third Monday of January. November 3rd, 1903, with the support of the U.S. Gover government, Panama issues a declaration of independence from Colombia. The revolution was engineered by a faction backed by the Panama Canal Company. That's This Week in History, your ultimate source for those key moments in time. I'm Bryce Barker, thanks for stopping by. And join us again next time for another journey through time as we experience the fun, fascinating, entertaining, and educational facts that make up This Week in History. We have plenty more of the morning show ahead, including a look at this week's lunch menu. But first, as we head to break, we have the word of the week. Each week we highlight the advanced English words so when you use them in a sentence, you can impress even educated speakers. Here's our word of the week. I'm a bus driver. 
I'm a bus driver. I'm a bus driver. Wouldn't, Wouldn't you, you like, like to, to be, be a bus, bus driver, driver too? too? New Hanover County Schools is now hiring individuals to be a part of our elite core of school bus drivers. That's right. You can work full-time, part-time, or serve as a substitute bus driver. New Hanover County Schools offers competitive wages, flexible hours, and state benefits. Best of all, you get to work with the greatest kids in the world. We need you! Contact us today to join the next free commercial driver's license class. New Hanover County Schools is an equal opportunity employer. Women Heart is in a race to save lives. Heart disease is the number one killer of women. It's 80% preventable if you know the facts. Millions of women are living with or at risk of different types of heart disease, like AFib, which is a type of irregular heartbeat. It affects both women and men, but women with AFib have a higher risk of stroke and death than men. Get educated. See your doctor. Know the facts. Diet and exercise are key to staying healthy. Know the risks. Women Heart does something really unique, solely focusing on women and providing peer-to-peer -peer support. To win this race, we all have to do it together. Our hearts beat as one. To learn more, visit womenheart.org. Welcome back to The Morning Show. I'm Ely Feldman. And I'm Bradley Meadows. We now have our October segment of NC Happenings. Everyone should get out there and pen, should get out their pen and paper as we take a trip across the state, look at all the events taking place in the coming month. Whether you're looking for adventure or relaxation, mountains or beaches, the rhythm of city life or tranquility of nature, there is something happening for everyone here in North Carolina. Date, November 10th. Place, Chapel Hill. Event, 25th Annual Orange County Open Studio Tour. See wonderful art during this day-long open studio tour. This once-a-year close and personal tour highlights approximately 90 Orange County artist studios, including painters, potters, sculptors, glassmakers, and more. It starts Saturday at 10 a.m. and runs till 5 p.m. Admission is free, and you can visit ocagnc.org for more information. Date, November 16th. Place, Fayetteville. Event, carriage tour of Old Fayetteville Cool Spring Downtown District and s, s carriage rides host the guided tours. They leave hourly and include historic sites from Fayetteville's colorful 250 year history. It also includes sites from the Revolutionary War era. It all starts Saturday from 1 to 6 p.m. and the tours last 45 minutes. Admission is $25 for adults and $15 for children. For more information, call 910-223-1089. Date, November 22nd through the 23rd. Place, Blowing Rock. Event, Tweety Christmas. Tweety Christmas is celebrating the holidays for 2019. Acti activities include a nighttime train ride with lights display, Santa's gingerbread house, a Christmas variety show, giant snow globe, and possibly snow. The event goes from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Admission is $38 per person. For more information, visit tweetsy.com. Date, November 23rd to 24th. Place, Winston-Salem. Event, 56th Annual Piedmont Craftsman's Fair. More than 100 of the finest artisans from across the Southeast fill the booths at this great event. The fair presents a sampling of the finest work available in artist-designed handmade home goods, glass, ceramics, jewelry, furniture, and decorative items. The fair is the unofficial kickoff of Winston-Salem's amazing arts-centric holiday, shopping in the city's eclectic downtown. On Saturday, it starts at 10 a.m. and runs to 6 p.m., and Sunday, it starts from noon to 5 p.m. Admission is free. You can contact 336-725-1516 for more information. Date, November 26th, place, Goldsboro. Event, Downtown Lights Up. Join us for the night of family fun as we flip a switch and light up Downtown Goldsboro for the holiday season. This event features visits with Santa Claus, holiday characters, hot cocoa, kids crafts, trolley rides, ice skating, and holiday entertainment, plus a big surprise. The event starts at 8 p.m. to 6, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. 
Admission is free. For more information, visit dgdc.org. Date, November 29th to the 30th. Place, Wrightsville Beach. Event, North Carolina Holiday Flotilla. Come for Thanksgiving and spend a long weekend with family and friends at the coast celebrating the North Carolina Holiday Flotilla. It is a weekend full of activities and family fun. Kick off the holiday season with the annual tree lighting ceremony and visit from Santa. The festival in the park at Wrightsville Beach Park features over 100 arts and crafts vendors, festival food, an antique car show, a large play area for children, and the popular a a Arab Choo Choo. On Friday, it runs from 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Admission is free. You can visit WilmingtonAndBeaches.com for more information. If these events weren't enough for you, or you were looking for something different to do, then, che then check out the website www.visitnc.com. Under the Upcoming Events tab, you'll be able to sort and search for something that suits your need. It's time for our morning news. Let's send it over to Milo Kinney, who has several interesting stories to report. Good morning, Milo. Good morning, and welcome to Your School News on The Morning Show. I'm Milo Kenny. Our top story this week, on a beautiful fall evening in October, parents, students, friends, school staff, and community members gathered at Hoggard High School Stadium to enjoy the 2019 Marching Band Showcase. The evening consists of one magnificent performance after another as each of the county's four high schools took to the field. The Ashley's Band was first to ignite the crowd performing Prisoners of Our Own Device, then the Laney Marching Buccaneers performed Painted Black, which featured Fife, Fogs and Flags, Festive Unrest, and A New Captain Rises. New Hanover High then took the field and performed a show called Phenomenal Woman. Hoggard High closed out the show with Bent. It was an amazingly wonderful evening capped off with the traditional grand finale, when all four high schools take the field together and perform their songs in succession. This year's marching band showcase was another spectacular success. If you missed it, fear not, the showcase will be airing right here on NHCS-TV. Pine Valley kindergartners got an experience of walking field trip to the Pine Valley Fire Station during Fire Safety Week as a class. Kindergartners walked to the fire station in the Pine Valley neighborhood. Firefighters went over fire safety with the students and showed them their uniform and explained why it is needed. They also showed kids around the fire station, gave students a chance to spray the fire hose, and allowed them to walk and sit in the fire truck. Some even got to experience a real 911 call and see the firefighters load up and head out to an emergency from the fire station. The tour is very enjoyable and memorable experience for the kindergartners each year, and the firefighters at WFD Station 7 do an awesome job of making this an educational and fun trip for the kids. Fifth grade students over at Ogden Elementary recently got the chance to tour Fort Fisher Aquarium. The kids grabbed their nets and hiked out into the marsh to learn about living and non-living organisms. They went, inside into th they went inside into the aquarium to check out the stingrays, sharks, jellyfish, and other sea life. The NC Aquarium at Fort Fisher is one of the only 230 accredited members of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums a nonprofit organization dedicated to the highest standards of areas of conservation, animal welfare, education, science, and recreation. For many of the elementary students, it was their first trip to the aquarium. They were amazed by the large tanks and wide variety of sea life on display. The tour of the marsh gave the students real insight of the plant and animal life found within it. The students also learned about our local habitats and what they can do to support the things living in them. It was an exciting and educational experience for all the Ogden students. 19 schools in New Hanover County District were recognized by the NC Department of Public Instruction for their Multi-Tiered System of Support, or MTSS, implementation. The recognition was based on criteria for the 2018 to 2019 school year. MTSS is a framework which promotes school improvement through engaging research-based academic and behavioral practices. Congratulations to the following schools, which will be recognized at the ceremony on November 19th. Elementary schools include Alderman, Anderson, Blair, Bradley Creek, Carolina Beach, Cogden, Eaton, Forest Hills, Gregory, Murrayville, Ogden, Pine Valley, Snipes, Sunset Park, Winter Park, and Wrightsboro. Three middle schools were also recognized, middle, Myrtle Grove, Trask, and Williston. Congratulations to all the schools recognized. For all the latest on New Hanover County Schools, join us weekdays at 5 p.m. here on Spectrum Cable Channel 5 and Channel 191 in Carolina Beach. 
For your school news, a complete half hour of all the latest news and information from New Hanover County Schools. Now back to our host. Thanks, Milo. All right, it's time for this week's lunch menu. This is the menu from Monday, October 28th through Monday, November 3rd. On Monday, October 28th, spice up your day with pasta mixed with delicious meat sauce and served with a garlic knot, crispy chicken tenders, or a glamorous chicken cheese sandwich. Leave the lunch line with a smile because side items include green beans, sweet potato puffs, awesome tomato and cucumber salad, and diced peaches. Then on Tuesday, October 29th, get your grub on with good General Tso's chicken served with steamy brown rice, a sure to please sloppy joe, or a chicken quesadilla. Also be sure to add California blend vegetables and diced peaches to your plate for a belly filling meal. On Wednesday, October 30th, you won't want to miss out on lunch as your cafeteria will be serving beautiful barbecue brisket sandwich chicken wings with a dinner roll or a beef taco served with Spanish rice. Also, chow down on pinto beans and amazing applesauce. On Thursday, October 31st, take a crunchy bite out of a bacon cheeseburger, barbecue chicken served with brown rice, or a barkingly good hot dog. Along with those selections, add roasted potatoes, scrumptious baked beans, and mandar mandarin oranges. Then, on Friday, October, November 1st, energize yourself with sure to please chicken nuggets, a beef and cheddar sandwich, or a French bread pizza. Also be sure to add marvelous mashed potatoes, roasted butternut squash, and mixed fruit to your plate for a belly fill and meal. Finally, on Monday, November 3rd, shake off those Monday morning blues at lunch with crispy chicken wings served with a garlic knot, lasagna roll up served with a yummy garlic knot, or a meatball hoagie. Also take pleasure in drool inducing broccoli and cheese, creamy pasta salad, tomato and cucumber salad, and diced peaches. And there you have it, the lunch menu for the week. In addition to those items, milk, a garden salad, fresh fruit, French bread pizza, and a peanut butter and jelly combo will be available daily. So many delicious choices. Don't forget you can also start your day off with a healthy and hearty breakfast at school. Now, when we come back, we will have a special Halloween safety segment. It's coming up right after this short break. to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Welcome back to The Morning Show. I'm Ely Feldman. And I'm Bradley Meadows. We, can, we continue today's show with a feature on Halloween safety. Halloween is a night of fun where excited young children can let their imaginations run wild as they become their favorite character and receive candy for doing so. But while you are out trick-or-treating, it is important to keep in mind of safety. 
People of all ages should pay close attention to this segment. Young viewers may learn something new, while adults will receive good reminders on Halloween safety. We have a list of Halloween health and safety complied by the C CDC. Following these simple tips can help make this Halloween fun and safe for everyone. Everyone wants to have a safe and happy Halloween for themselves, their guests, and especially their children. Using safety tips and some common sense can help you make the most of your Halloween season and keep it as enjoyable for your kids as it is for you. There are lots of simple ways to help keep your child safe on Halloween when accidents and injuries are more likely to occur. The excitement of children and adults at this time of year can sometimes make them not as careful as they would normally be. To help you stay safe, here are 13 tips to remember while you're out trick-or-treating this Halloween. Just keep the words, Safe Halloween, in mind and the important tip that comes with each letter. S. Swords, knives, and similar costume accessories should be short, soft, and flexible. A. Avoid trick-or-treating alone, walk in groups, or with a trusted adult. F. Fasten reflective tape to costumes and bags to help drivers see you. E. Examine all treats for choking hazards and tampering before eating them. Limit the amount of treats you eat. H. Hold a flashlight while trick-or-treating to help you see others and to help others see you. A. Always walk and don't run from house to house. L. Look both ways before crossing the street. Use established crosswalks whenever possible. L. Lower your risk for serious eye injury by not wearing decorative contact lenses. O. Only walk on sidewalks wherever possible or on the far edge of the road facing traffic to stay safe. W. Wear well-fitting masks, costumes, and shoes to avoid blocked vision, trips, and falls. E. Eat only factory-wrapped treats. Avoid eating homemade treats made by strangers. E. Enter homes only if you're with a trusted adult. Only visit well-lit houses. Do not stop at dark houses. Never accept rides from strangers. N. Never walk near lit candles or luminaries. Be sure to wear flame-resistant costumes. By keeping Halloween a fun, safe, and happy holiday for you and your kids, you'll look forward to many happy years of good memories. So remember to have fun, stay safe, and be smart. And happy Halloween! While Halloween is a fun holiday, please be sure to be safe. One unfortunate fact about Halloween is that children are more than twice as likely to be killed in a pedestrian car accident on Halloween night than any other night. So please be careful and use proper safety precautions. We hope these tips helped, but if you need a reminder or would like more Halloween safety, then visit the website www.halloween-safety.com. There you will find safety information on many different topics such as costumes, driving on Halloween, and trick-or-treating. Our next segment is College Bound 411. College Bound 411 is dedicated to helping students achieve their dream of attending college. We provide practical and timely information for students so they can complete, compete effectively for college admission. We also clue you in on the latest in scholarship information. So get out that pen and paper. Welcome to College Bound 411. If you're a senior planning on going to college when you graduate, then listen close. Today we have three great scholarships you can apply for. First, we have the Crumley Roberts Chairman Scholarship. This is a chance for three graduating high school seniors to win $2,500. Originally created by the law firm 25 years ago, the program has awarded over $265,000 to future college students. The program offers $2,500 dollars scholarships to students looking to transfer from a community college to a four-year accredited college or university. To apply for this scholarship, you must have a minimum grade point average of 3.2 or higher, 
be a graduating North Carolina senior who plans to attend a four-year university or college. Write an essay. Submit two letters of recommendation. For other information, please visit crumleyroberts.com or call 866-691-0607. Applications are due February the 1st. Looking for a full ride to college? If so, you will want to definitely apply for our next scholarship. The Cheatham White Scholarship provides 20 prospective college freshmen with four years of free tuition, student fees, housing, meals, textbooks, supplies, travel, a laptop, and other personal expenses. This scholarship is only available for competitive applicants applying to North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University or North Carolina Central University. Other requirements include being a United States citizen or permanent resident, planning to graduate the spring before college admission, have a minimum of a 4.0 GPA, have a minimum of 1280 on the new SAT or 1200 on the old SAT, show qualities of integral character and leadership, be incredibly involved in extracurriculars and demonstrate a commitment to community service. For more information or to apply, visit nccu.edu. Applications are due soon, November 1st. Finally, the North Carolina Florence Kidder Memorial Scholarship awards graduating high school seniors with a passion for historical preservation. Since 1923, the scholarship honored the first president of the National Society of the Colonial Dames of America in the state of North Carolina, Florence Hill Kidder. The scholarship provides first place winners with $3,000 and runners up $1,000. To apply, you must be a high school senior planning to enroll in the post-secondary 2020-2021 school year. Write an enticing essay about a historical site or building around your county and express its significance. Your essay should include what type of people and events happened there, why it's so important culturally, and who preserved the site. You should also go into depth on why you believe historical preservation is important. The scholarship will be awarded based 75% on the individual essay, 20% on the scholarship and character, and 5% on financial need. Applications are due this winter, February 2nd, 2020. For more information, visit ncdames.org or call 910-763-8100. That's all for today. Be sure to search for scholarships during your free time and apply. It can save you and your family a lot of money. If you're college bound, be sure to communicate with counselors and potential colleges to confirm specific dates for application deadlines, as well as course requirements. And remember not to wait too long to apply. Deadlines come quicker than you think, and it's best to be ahead of the curve. It's time for a short break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <sighs> There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. They call me Prince like I'm royalty or something. But the places I've lived ain't no palaces. So I don't need grilled salmon or a new scratching post. Just give me a cardboard box and a can of tuna and we're good. You can even change my name. I'm cool being the kitty formerly known as Prince. Good morning, and welcome back to The Morning Show. I'm Bradley Meadows. And I'm Ely Feldman. We have some great segments ahead, but first we have our Did You Know? Did you know? Did you know that more than 200 people were accused of practicing witchcraft during the Salem Witch Trials? The witch trials started during the spring of 1692 when a wave of hysteria overtook the community. Elizabeth and Abigail Paris accused several local women of bewitching them, causing their violent, uncontrollable outburst. 
1976, Science Magazine published a study that suggested that rye ergot, a fungus blight that causes delusion, vomiting, and muscle spasms, was the actual cause of the girls' fits. The first person to be executed as a result from the trials was an older woman named Bridget Bishop. When asked if she was guilty of witchcraft, she famously replied, I am as innocent as the unborn child. She was then hanged at what is now known as Salem's Gallows Hill. Within the next several months, 18 more people were hanged and seven others died in jail. Eventually, the trials ended in 1693 and the town of Salem agreed that they were a mistake and financially compensated the families of the accused. Over the next 300 years, the injustice and paranoia that surrounded the Salem witch trials inspired countless books, plays, movies, and even video games. There's all, our, there's all our spooky facts on the Salem witch trials. We hope you weren't too scared to enjoy them. And remember, before you go on a witch hunt, make sure to check out that there's, no, that there's not a fungus problem that you're having. Indeed. Now from witches to bats, well, butterflies and bats, it's time for Science Nation, where they take a dynamic, entertaining look at the research and the researchers that will change our lives. Today, they look at butterfly and bat wings and how they work in hopes of applying the nature implying what nature does and what we can do. Here's Science Nation from the National Science Foundation. It amazes me that insects that weigh half a gram can live so long and travel so far. Up to two billion monarch butterflies migrate every year to winter in Mexico. That's where ecologist Sonia Altizer goes to get a good look at them. Male, 51.55. With support from the National Science Foundation, Altizer and her team study how long distance migration in flying animals affects the spread and evolution of infectious disease. In monarchs, they study a parasite. So adult butterflies that are really heavily infected will look like this one. This is a protozoan parasite called Ophryocystis electroscira, OE for short. This flying treadmill in her lab at the University of Georgia tracks speed and stamina. On average, infected monarchs fly about 20% less well than healthy butterflies. We all know human diseases can spread quickly. It only takes one infected person hopping on an airplane. But for insects and birds, long distance travel often means lower infection rates. Perhaps only the strong survive? If we had to run a marathon with the flu, we probably wouldn't do very well. The animals that are the most heavily infected simply drop out of this migration en route to their wintering sites and they simply can't make the long distance journey. But human activities like habitat destruction and herbicide use are disrupting some of these long-standing migration patterns. If we take the migration away and we're left with smaller remnant populations that don't migrate, we could actually see infections build up in those populations and that could possibly increase the risk of pathogens jumping over into people and their domesticated animals. In Peru, Altizer's team studies vampire bats. Their populations have exploded as ranchers have introduced livestock into the Andes and the Amazon. And more bloodthirsty bats might mean more rabies. One of the main goals we have is to try to understand what determines the frequency and intensity of rabies outbreaks uh, and what can we do about it. Altizer also analyzes data and parasite samples sent in from citizen scientists around the world. Her aim is to piece together the big picture of how pathogens spread when their hosts take wing. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien. Another captivating segment of Science Nation. I never knew butterflies migrated. I thought that was very interesting. That's one of the great things about Science Nation segment. It always teaches us some interesting facts and how they are being used to change our world. It does indeed. We continue our show with gardening and nature. Even through fall, even though fall is getting here, it is getting a little cooler outside. It's still a good time to enjoy nature. Our friends from the Cape Fear Garden Club continue to provide us with wonderful information and tips for you to put these to use at your home. In this episode, host Barbara Downing tells us what it means to have a certified wildlife habitat. Good morning and welcome to Gardening and Nature, brought to you by Cape Fear Garden Club. I am Barbara Downing and I am here with Megan and Emma from Myrtle Grove Middle School. 
Today we are going to explore what it means to have a certified wildlife habitat. Okay, Emma, what is the first requirement? Provide food for wildlife, like seeds from plants, berries, nectar, foliage, twigs, nuts, fruits, sap, pollen, and suet. Great! Now, Megan, what is the second requirement? Supply water for wildlife with a birdbath, lake, stream, seasonal pool, ocean, water, garden, pool, river, butterfly, puddling, area, rain garden, or spring. Perfect! Now, Emma, what is the third requirement? Create cover for wildlife with a wooden area, a bramble patch, round cover, rock pile or wall, a cave, a roosting box, dense shrubs or thicket, evergreen brush or log pile, burrows, a meadow or prairie or water, garden, garden or pond. Super. Finally, Megan, what is the fourth requirement? Give wildlife a place to raise their young with mature, mature trees, a meadow, prairie, nesting boxes, wetland, a cave, host plants or ca uh, for caterpillars, dead trees or snags, dense shrubs, or a thicket, water, garden, pond, and burrows. I know it sounds like a lot of requirements, but there are simple ways uh, to make your garden wildlife habitable. Don't always rake away all the uh, your, your leaves. Uh, let your grass grow a little higher before mowing. Let flowers go to seed and don't pick up all the pine cones. We can even construct simple cover with broken pieces of pottery like the one that we have here in the studio. Do we have any schools that have wildlife, wildlife habitat certification? Yes, recently uh, Bradley Creek Elementary received certification from the North Carolina Wildlife Federation as a result of efforts by the Gardening for Wildlife Committee of Cape Fear Garden Club. There will be a sign placed on the school grounds designating the school as a certified wildlife habitat. Wow, that's impressive. Our viewers also can learn more about wildlife habitats at their local library or online at host websites. That's a wrap for this edition of Gardening in Nature. On behalf of my co-host Emma and Megan, Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we explore winter gardens. Back to you. Thank you, Barbara. That was, a, that was a great information. That was a wonderful segment. We look forward to the next episode. Okay, everyone, get your thinking caps ready because when we come back from break, it's game time. It's our Halloween game time. Catch the candy. Keep it tuned here to join in on all the fun. We'll be right back. Because of you, I felt hopeless. Because you said rude things about my work, I started to question my own voice. I know it was a joke, but it still hurt me. Because of your negative comments online, I've almost quit doing the one thing that makes me happiest in life. Because you shared something about me that was private, I felt embarrassed. Because you said hi to me on the first day of school, I felt included and I knew that I was going to be okay. Because of you sharing your story with me, I feel comfortable sharing my own. Because you were there when I was coming out, you helped me regain my confidence. I'm still here today because of you.
Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Game Time. I'm your host, Milo Kenny. Halloween is this week, and to celebrate here on Game Time, our theme is candy. Ely and Bradley tell us all about the top candies in the United States, and then to compete to earn some. Let's get, start, let's get started, tastiest game time of the year. Halloween is just around the corner, and we have a list that you can sink your teeth into. Today, we feature 10 of the top candies here in the United States. There are so many different types of candy these days, it can be tough to choose which is best and each person has different tastes. Our list today covers 10 candies that have held up over time and the overwhelming majority of people will agree they are yummy to eat. Let's get started. Here is our choice of 10 of the top candies. First on our list is the infamous sword swinging candy bar, Three Musketeers, with the slogan, a lighter way to enjoy a chocolate. This bar features fluffy whipped chocolate covered in a solid chocolate shell. Introduced in 1932, it originally had three pieces in one package, flavored chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla, which is where the name came from. However, the vanilla and strawberry was phased out in the 1940s. Anyone who loves to get two candy bars for the price of one should already know about Twix. Packaged in pairs, a Twix bar consists of cookie topped with caramel and completely covered in chocolate. First produced in the United Kingdom, it came to the U.S. in 1979. The name was created from Twin Biscuits or Twin Bi Bix to Twix. Next on the list is Starburst. The fruit chews are said to be unexplainably juicy. This box-shaped fruit-flavored soft taffy candy comes in a variety of flavors in each pack. They were introduced in the U.S. in 1967 and have been beloved by children since their arrival. The Hershey's Bar is the flagship chocolate bar manufactured by the Hershey's Company. The bar of solid milk chocolate was introduced in 1894 and was first mass-produced chocolate in the United States. Today, it is one of the top-selling chocolate bars worldwide. Next, we have Gummy Bears, Gummy Worms, Gummy Candies. These popular gelatin-based candies come in a variety of shapes and colors and flavors. They are a small fruit gum candy that was originally manufactured in Germany and they were in the shape of a bear. Their success has spawned a large number of other shapes, including worms, frogs, penguins, and spiders. Reese's peanut butter cups are just that, a cup of peanut butter, only the cup is made of and covered in chocolate. These delicious, candy, these delicious candies are chosen favorites by peanut butter lovers who were created in, the 19, in 1928. Like Twix, each standard package includes two cups for one price. Skittles, famous slogan, a rainbow of flavor is one, is one candy also known for their humorous commercials. This fruit flavored sweet has a hard sugar shell with a softer chewy inside. They were imported from Britain for three years until domestic production began in 1982. Our list continues with Kit Kat. The chocolate covered wafer biscuit bar consisted four mini bars connected by their chocolate covering. The Kit Kat bar has a long change in history starting in 1911. The bar as we know it today wasn't packaged and marketed in the U.S. until, 19, until the 1970s. Another candy with popular commercials is Snickers, which has fun with its slogan, Who are you when you're hungry? Snickers is a nugget bar topped with peanuts and caramel and then covered in chocolate. It was introduced in 1930 and has always marketed itself as a way to satisfy your hunger between meals. And finally, M&M's. The number one selling candy in our country is a tasty treat that melts in your mouth, not in your hands. M&M's are a candy sugar shell around a milk chocolate center, which has a variety of colors in each pack. It was created in the United States in 1941 and now is sold in over 100 countries. There you have our list of 10 of the top candies in the world. Use this list if you want to make all the trick-or-treaters coming to your house this Halloween happy. Any of these top 10 candies will surely be a treat every child would love. And try not to eat all 10 at once. It may give you a bellyache. And now it's time for our popular morning show Halloween game, Catch the Candy. We are rejoined by Milo, who will tell us all the rules and how Ely and I can win some tasty candy. Welcome back, Milo. 
That is right. I have candy which you can win if you are successful in our game. Catch the candy. Now listen closely to the rules. You each get a free 10 seconds to toss a piece of candy in your Halloween pumpkin. Every piece you make in, you get to keep. The catch is you only. The catch is you can only toss one piece of candy at a time. If you miss a basket, you have to you have to get the candy, run back to the line, and toss again. To help each of you out, I'm going to give you a chance to earn more time before we toss. You will each get a chance to answer five questions. For each correct answer, I will give you ten more seconds. We will start with the questions. Are you ready? Okay, contestants. <sighs> The first question is going to go to Ely. Of course, candy is the highlight for most on Halloween. Can you name the most popular candy in America? Is it A, Sour Patch Kids, B, Skittles, C, Reese's Cup, or D, Hershey's? Um, I'm going to have to go with B. That is correct. Skittles is the most popular Halloween candy oh, in America. It's Hershey's. <laughs> what percent of, and this is for Bradley, what percent of American parents say they don't eat some of their children's candy? Is it A, 85%, B, 16%, C, 22%, or D, 35%? Mm, 35%, D. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct answer is C, 22% of parents say they don't eat their children's candy. In what decade did trick-or-treating as we know it start gaining popularity in America? Is it A, the 1930s, B, the 1950s, C, the 1980s, or D, all the way back in the 1800s? Ely. Hmm, I'm going to have to go with B. I'm sorry, that is also the incorrect answer. The correct answer is A, the 1930s. <clears throat> For Bradley, which chocolate candy did the first space shuttle crew insist on taking into space with them in 1982? Was it A, Mars bars, B, Milky Way, C, Twix, or D, M&M's? Um... B, Milky Way. I'm sorry, that is the incorrect answer. Correct answer was D, M&M's. For Ely. In the USA, how many pieces of candy are most commonly handed out to trick-or-treaters? Is it A, two pieces, B, one piece, C, four pieces, or D, 50 pieces? I'm gonna, you know, D sounds really, that sounds good, but I'm gonna have to go with A. That is correct, it is two pieces on average. Dude, she's getting all the easy questions. For you, Bradley. On, average, on an average year, how many do Americans spend on Halloween candy? Is it A, $30 million, B, $2.7 billion, C, $50 million, or D, $100 million? I'm going to go with C, $50 million. Sorry, that is incorrect. The correct oh answer is actually B, $2.7 billion. Wow, that wow that's a lot, a lot of money, lot of money, money on money. candy. <laughs> that's a lot of candy. All right, for Ely, what is the second most popular Halloween candy? Is it A, candy corn, B, Twizzlers, C, Mr. Good Bar, or D, Almond Joy? I have to go with D. I'm sorry, that was the incorrect answer. The correct answer was A, candy corn. Hmm. Don't agree, but. Yeah, I don't agree at all. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley, you've likely seen the classic commercial, but just how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Is it A, 1,000, B, 36, C, 123, or D, 364? I think it's A, 1,000. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct answer is D, 364. All right, Ely, where does the Milky Way candy bar get its name from? A, the Milky Way Galaxy, B, Charles S. Milky, a famous chocolatier, C, a type of malted milkshake that was popular in the early 1920s, or D, Milky Ice Cream, a brand of ice cream famous in the 1950s. I'm going to have to go with A. Surprisingly, that is incorrect. Mm. The correct answer is C, a type of malted milk trick that was popular in the early 1920s. All right, this is the last question for Bradley. Which U.S. holiday sees the highest candy sales after Halloween? Is it A, Easter, B, Christmas, C, Valentine's Day, or D, Mother's Day? Valentine's Day. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct answer was Easter. Huh, interesting. <clears throat> That's great. Good job, guys. Here are your totals. Remember that you both started with a free 10 seconds. Ely, for your correct answers, you earned a total of 30 seconds, and Bradley earned a total of 10 seconds. We're going to take a short break to prepare for the toss. We'll be right back. in a 
shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. I'm a bus driver. I'm a bus driver. I'm a bus driver. Wouldn't, Wouldn't you, you like, like to be, be a bus driver, driver too? New Hanover County Schools is now hiring individuals to be a part of our elite core of school bus drivers. That's right. You can work full-time, part-time, or serve as a substitute bus driver. New Hanover County Schools offers competitive wages, flexible hours, and state benefits. Best of all, you get to work with the greatest kids in the world. We need you! Contact us today to join the next free commercial driver's license class. New Hanover County Schools is an equal opportunity employer. Welcome back to The Morning Show. Before the break, our two hosts answered questions to earn time for a candy toss. Now they get to try and score some candy. Let's go over the rules once more. You have to toss a piece of candy in our Halloween basket here. Every piece you make in, you get to keep. Remember, the catch is you only can use one piece of candy at a time. If you miss a basket, you have to get the candy, run back to the line, and toss again. Yili, you get to go first. You earn 30 seconds. I have a timer set. Are you ready to go? Yes, I am. All right. Ready, set, go. Run back. You got to run back and grab I'm it. Run back. Third time's the charm. All right, here you go. Keep going. Oh. And that's time. You got two pieces of candy that you get to keep. <coughs> All right. While you can count your candy, it's Bradley's turn. Are you ready, Bradley? Sure. All right. Ready, set, and go. Oh my gosh, bro. This is actually hard. <laughs> I only have 10 seconds. And no. that is time. No candy. <laughs> well, that does it for this edition. Well, that does it for this edition of The Morning Show. Remember, for the best TV of all, each and every day, keep tuned right here for New Hanover County Schools TV on the Learning Network of the Cape Fear. Have a great day. <laughs>